Okay, so I got disconnected. I had to mix some storage. So I was saying you got to wiggle your toes <laughs> to get out of the sleep paralysis because it's like you can't move. I guess like the larger parts of your body is like they too heavy. But like wiggling your toes is probably the easiest thing that you could do. It's like your body is trying to connect, your spirit trying to connect back with your body or something like that. So yeah, I was scared. I was trying to say help me <laughs> and it just it it just didn't work when I got up I was scared in the mic so um so yeah I think we can see into the spiritual realm now I don't know if I said it but I'm repeat it so I thought I guess actually you know what I thought was that it could have, um, the reason why I bring the whole story up, because now that I'm thinking back on it, is because it could have been actually my sister's baby dad, you know, peeking around the corner if he was in the house, but I don't know. That's speculation. Could have been something, but I hope it wasn't. <laughs> I'm hoping I was just losing my whole mind. <laughs> But, um, so, yeah, so I think we can see into the spiritual realm. And I think when you start to see those floating things, that's your first, that's your indications that you can see into the spiritual realm. Now, the, the apparition that I'm saying that I see by the door and stuff, it don't look like floaters. You know, it's telling, I'm telling you what it looked like. But I think that's signs that, you, that you're seeing into the spiritual realm and, you know, your eyes is just picking up stuff that you can't really see, but that's there. If if you can kind of understand what I'm saying. Now, also, they finding out that our um, <clears throat> penile gland can pick up infrared, probably can pick up ultraviolet light as well, because the penile gland, um, it absorbs light. And we're going to read a little bit about that, but... Before we talk about light, I also think that the penile gland can see in the dark. So if you close your eyes for for a long time, it's like you can start to see this pulsing. And I guess how I want to explain it is not actually seeing it since your eyes is closed. It's like it's it's like hearing what you see. I don't know if that make any type of sense to y'all, but it's like you can hear. I mean, you can see, like, the vibration, I guess I want to say. So, you can just, like, see the vibrations coming out on waves, right? And how you see, it's like the the waves will go around. The waves will go around the structure, whatever is there. So, like, the couch right now, like, the waves will be, like, coming out from around the couch. And you'll be able to see the shape of the couch, just in solid with the waves coming off of it, if y'all understand on what I'm saying. I think that's a way we can see with our eyes closed. You know, they say you get eyes in the back of your head, you know what I'm saying? All those sayings and stuff I think is true. One, two, three. And look, y'all, it's 1, 2, 3 a.m. The, uh, the number 123 actually means a wave. Y'all know that? It means wave. And I was just talking about it's like waves, vibrations coming off. See? See how God works? Good look. So that's confirmation. <laughs> look. But, um, so that's, okay. So that's another way I think that we can see not only in the light, but in the dark. I think we just haven't developed these abilities because we don't know we got them we not raised in the culture and the society to um practice these things i mean we just not so we're going to talk about a little bit about the um infrared thing this thing and he actually made a good point about because it's like i UFOs and stuff around my house all the time. I mean, they I know they UFOs because they flying low. 
they <laughs> I'm talking about they flying low and they cruising slow like <laughs> like they just out here and you know what it's like I'd be like do anybody else be seeing be seeing this stuff but I think it got to do with you being able to pick up their magnetic frequency and I think the reason why they stay around here and they be because they they like how how you know they want to know how you can see them that's what I think. They they want to know, like, how can she see what's going on? How can she see us? Who is she? What is she doing? <laughs> they more interested in, in you than you women that than you are in them. They like how can she do this. So it's a sight unseen. Humans are able to see infrared light, really. You've seen the graph since you took science class in primary school. The electromagnetic spectrum, and y'all know that's all we've been talking about in the last few videos, is the electromagnetic field, psychic, and all of these abilities, gifts, spirits, get, uh, gifts of the spirit. So the electromagnetic spectrum compromised of a tiny, whiny slice of visible light in ultraviolet and x-rays at the top and infrared at the bottom and ever since our teachers have taught us that human beings are incapable of seeing both the infrared and ultraviolet radiation without the aid of special equipment right see that's why we don't even try because from the from birth we told that we can't <laughs> so it's like why even try you just all you just think you can because that's what you've been taught all your life so it turns out a new experiment has demonstrated that under a special set of circumstances, the human retina can perceive electromagnetic wavelengths at the infrared spectrum. The study was carried out by an international team of researchers co-led by scientists at the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, and their paper was published on December 1st in the Proceedings of the National Academy, Academy of Sciences online early ed edition so it's a using retina cells of both mice and humans and powerful lasers that that emit pulses of infrared light and that's ain't that what i just said pulses when you close it's like pulses coming off of i'm trying to tell y'all of infrared light the researchers found that when the laser was pulsed at rapidly enough intervals the light sensing cells in the retina will get a double whammy of energy when that happens the eye will be able to detect the light even though it's actually below the range of the standard visible spectrum when using what we learned in these experiments to try to develop a new tool that will allow physicians to not only examine the eye but also stimulate specific parts of the retina to determine whether it's functioning properly says senior investigator vladimir j kafalov phd associate professor of ophthalmology and visual sciences at washington university excuse me we hope that ultimately this discovery will have some very practical applications what originated that experiments was something what originated the experiments was something of an eye glitch in another investigation conducted by the researchers research team in which the team members reported seeing occasional green flashes when working with the infrared lasers intrigued by the apparent impossi uh, impossibility of such visions the scientists moved on trying to solve the mystery they were able to see the laser light which was outside of the normal visible range. And we really wanted to figure out how they were able to sense light that was supposed to be invisible, said Franz Wimberg, PhD, one of the study's lead authors and postdoctoral research associate in the Department of Off oh, don't go that word again, forget it, <laughs> in visual sciences at Washington University. After consulting the scientific literature as well as previous reports of people claiming to see in infrared the team started to conduct trial and error experiments and they eventually discovered that the, that the shorter the pulse the more likely a person to perceive it by packing more photons in the energy pulse makes it more possible that two photons with the wavelength of 1000 
nanometers would be perceived as a single photon of 500 nanometers, which fall into the range of visible light. It's photons, it's light. What appeals to me about this study is not its potential application in medicine or industry or the fact that scientists didn't follow the it can't be therefore it isn't of skeptics which helped the uncover of a new property of nature but whether it can somehow play a factor in certain paranormal events so this is the part we want to talk about would it be possible that some ghostly apparitions are the result of the witness retina being excited by electromag by electromagnetic energy that under certain certain circumstances might be perceived as visible light and you know what i think is doing this the penile gland the penile gland is would um absorb the light even though we see with our eyes that this information go to the penile gland and other stuff to make our <coughs> vision for us to see the pictures or whatever that we see it's not just our eyes it's hit our eyes and then we see it's like that stuff got to go to our our brain first um and i also wanted to say another point dang i forgot it so let's say um but whether it can somehow play a factor in certain paranormal events would it be possible that some ghostly apparitions are the result of the witness retina being excited by the electromagnetic energy under certain some okay yeah so that's what i was saying the penile gland pick up you know the light and we've been talking about the electromagnetic field how um the heart actually um expands the electromagnetic field but I think the penile gland can actually see the the electromagnetic field. If you see if you see what I'm saying. So it say, um, wouldn't it be possible? Okay, we already read that, I already read it twice. I'm also reminded of John Keel's ideas about what he coined as the super spectrum, because he was convinced that all paranormal phenomena from ghosts to UFOs had essentially an electromagnetic nature. Also, which we talked about in the video that the ley line video that they was using the ley lines, the magnetic electromagnetic field and the ley lines, the electromagnetic field of Earth to travel, which is actually when um, I was watching one of those YouTubers who, you know, do the alien investigations and all of that. And it was hat on a map. It was a line of where they found the most like UFO activity. And I promise y'all when I did the lane line video, it was a map with a line, a, the same line on the lane line map saying it was a, a lay line. And they were saying that the, when we talked about in that video that the um, UFOs used the uh, ley lines to travel. These are some type of energies. I don't think they just, um, I don't know. But I'm telling y'all, they around my house. And I be like, dude, I told y'all, I'm like, do people see this? Because they just be riding low. That's how you know it's not no plane or nothing. They be riding low. And those black helicopters always out here. So I know it's UFOs out here. They looking for them. Because <laughs> the, the, them must be riding low. They be riding low. And I just be like, do anybody else see this? I just don't think that other people can't see it. And it's, it tripped me out because, okay, for example, <clears throat> one time me and my husband and my brother were sitting out on the porch. And I done told this story before because I think this was the time where my husband really started to believe me about stuff I was saying. Because I was sounding real crazy, y'all, telling my family that the stars were sending me messages and stuff. Like, they was looking at me like, what? Hey, girls, you done lost your mind. They about to throw me in the crazy home. <laughs> so I think God did this thing so that they would believe me. <laughs> so one time we was on the porch and the orb just flew. I'm telling y'all, from the corner 
straight to my house, right down the middle of the street, past everybody's house, right up to my house, and then went in the sky. And nobody seen it but me, my brother, and my husband. I'm like, y'all see this, right? <laughs> like, what in the world? And it's like nobody else seen it. Like, it just flew right past everybody houses and stuff and nobody nobody seen the neighbors out on the porch they ain't, they don't see it i'm like this is crazy so it say also think of all the reports of flashing lights illuminating ufos like xmas trees not the best approach to go unnoticed or is it maybe it's possible that individuals who are more sensitive than the average sometimes perceive manifestations that normally go unseen by the naked eye in any case, it's cool to think that my old fourth grade science book is now outdated. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm in the middle of my attempt to acquire supervision thanks to the Science for the Masses Vitamin Supplements. Okay, I don't know. I don't even know what that was about. <laughs> okay, so. Did we talk about the uh, infrared? Yeah, we did talk about the infrared. Okay, so it said the penile gland. This is just a little extra information before we go. So it said the penile gland or epiphysis synthesizes and secretes melatonin, a structurally simple hormone that communicates information about environmental lighting to various parts of the body. So environmental lighting, all the lighting um, that's around us is processed by our penile gland. The dark to our penile gland know when it's dark and when it's light you know what i'm saying they know it know when we close our eyes and when we open our eyes okay and because i think the penile gland can pick up light when you got your third eye open i think it can pick up uh, just more spectrums more realms of light when it's open when it's you know functioning when you um actually utilizing it exercising it you know just like how you exercise your muscles and they get bigger so <clears throat> it say the penile varies in size among species in humans it's roughly one centimeter on left more in dogs it's about one millimeter long to observe the penile, reflect the cerebral hemisphere laterally and look for a small grayish bump in front of the cerebellum. 